Today on Unbox Daily, we are taking a look at the Totally Me sewing machine for ages eight and up. This is a kid sewing machine and we found it at Toys R Us for $29.99. In fact, I believe it is the Toys R Us brand because on the back it says ToysRUs.com. As I was looking around the store, I really didn't see much difference between the different brands. I just chose this one because it was pink and it had little jewels on it. We have had many requests on how to use one of these and honestly, I have been avoiding it because about five years ago I bought one and I was never able to get it to work. And I use a sewing machine all the time. I have a little inexpensive uh, brother, I think it is. I paid like $89 for it eight years ago. And it's very simple, but for some reason, this gave me some trouble. Well, it wasn't this company, it was another one, but they look, you know, pretty much the same. So today we are going to give it a try again. On the front of the box, it says that it is light and compact and it really sews. So you should be able to figure this out. Warning, adult assembly required and caution, it contains sharp points. It requires four AA batteries, which are not included. On the back of the box, it says it has a protective cover for safer sewing, a built-in cutting edge, a bobbin compartment and measuring tape, and operates with a foot pedal. And down here, there is a list of everything that the kit contains, like one sewing machine, one foot pedal, a needle, a needle threader, two metal bobbins with 40 yards of sewing thread two empty bobbins, one plastic sewing box, and three plastic rolls of sewing thread, which are 50 yards per color, and instructions. 12 pieces in all. So let's open it up and get started. Now that it is out of the box, I am going to take a moment to read through the instructions. And I'm not going to read this to you. However, just glancing over it, it's already way more helpful than my very first sewing machine. So thanks to Movie Magic, in a few minutes, I will have read this entire book. Okay, so yeah, you have to read the book. It goes into a lot of detail about all of the parts of the machine, uh, how to thread it, how to change the bobbin, how to do a back stitch. It's, yeah, there's a lot of information there. Thankfully, most of the work is done for you right out of the box. Most of it comes set from the factory for maximum performance. It is already threaded, and I would suggest using your camera phone to photograph or to video how it is done so that you can use it as a reminder later. To sew, this machine uses two bobbins, and they're already in place. You have one right here, and then there's one down there. And the bobbin is the little metal spool that has the thread on it. Sometimes they come in plastic on other machines, but for this one, use what the factory gave you. The thread spool is only used to put more thread onto an empty bobbin. This is the tension knob, which controls how loose or tight the top thread is. Don't mess with that. It comes already set from the factory. However, if there's a problem, then of course, you're gonna have to move it, but try not to if you don't have to. And what is going to affect the tension is the fabric that you use. So if you use something really heavy, like blue jeans and stuff, it's gonna mess that all up. So for our very first project, we're gonna start with something simple, like a nice cotton print. Fabric is not included. There is a needle already inside the safety cover. To change the needle, you need a screwdriver, which is not included. And then you would just unscrew the safety cover on the back. As mentioned earlier, the machine already comes threaded. However, if you need to thread it, then you need to remove the batteries first and then follow all of the lovely instructions that are outlined in the instruction manual. On the other side, this is the presser foot lever, which raises the foot up and down. And the foot is this little metal plate down here, which kind of sandwiches the fabric onto the bottom of the machine. It should be down when sewing and up to move the fabric. Here is the thread cutter on the front. It will cut you, so be careful. On the back of the machine, we have the switch for the light, the on and off button, and for the speed. There's two speeds here, you get high and low. This is the hand wheel, and it makes the needle go up and down. And in the back, here is the bobbin winder spool, and mine's pushed in, so hopefully we can figure out how to make that come out. This is the foot pedal and it plugs into the back of the machine. 
So we've gone over the parts of the machine. So now let's add the batteries. Grab some fabric and start sewing. Using a post-it as a pattern, cut two squares of fabric. Place them together with the pattern side or the good side together. Place the foot pedal on the floor. Raise the foot. Turn on the light. Place the fabric under the foot. I'm going to start in the middle of one side. Lower the foot. Turn the hand wheel away from you in two rotations to lock and start the stitch. Choose your speed on the side. I'm going to start with a low speed, so I push in the button. Gently push down on the foot pedal to begin sewing. When I get to a corner, I make sure the needle is still down in the fabric. I raise the lever so that I can turn the fabric. Put the lever back down and begin sewing again. When I get back to where I started, I leave a little space. Take my foot off the pedal. Raise the lever in the back. Turn the wheel away from me to raise the needle. Then pull the fabric out from underneath. Use the thread cutter on the side. Cut the excess fabric off at the corners. Turn it inside out at the opening. Add some fluff. Use a needle and thread to sew the opening closed to make a doll-sized pillow. So yay, it works! Pros and cons, it's a very small machine which can fit anywhere it's easy to store and it's inexpensive. However, it has two speeds and I usually like to go a little slower than what it allows you to go even at the low speed. And I think it's going to take a little bit more practice in guiding the material so that my pillows come out like squares instead of rectangles. But it does work and I think that the instructions for this machine are very clear. Now, all we have to do is practice. We've sewn a straight line, now let's try sewing a curved line. I fold some fabric accordion style until I have five layers. Cut a wedge shape that looks like the peeled off rind from an orange. Take two pieces, making sure the edges are lined up. Place it into the sewing machine with the edge of the fabric lining up with the edge of the foot. And I'm gonna sew, trying to make sure that they remain lined up. So just lock the stitch by turning the knob away from you, then push the pedal and start sewing. Lock the stitch at the end, raise the foot and remove the fabric. Then open it up, line up the next piece of fabric with only one of the edges and sew just as before. Oh man, I broke my thread. So now I have to remove the batteries, unscrew the safety cover, slide it up, make sure the foot is down, then gently pull apart thread the machine by going through the first loop, then up and over the tension, going between the two silver discs, through another loop, then all the way up through this top hole, come down through the center, through another loop, making sure the thread stays between that line, go through the silver hole by the needle, take the threader and place it through the opening in the needle, Put the thread through the end of the threader, then pull the threader, and that will bring the thread through the needle. Place the thread under the foot, and now the machine has been threaded. Replace the safety cover and the batteries to start sewing again. That was a little on the tedious side and time consuming, but now I can get back to sewing my wedges together. Lock the stitch and sew just as before. And if you don't want to use the pedal or don't have one, you can just push the on button to make it go and then push it again to make it stop. However, with that method, I feel like you lose some of the control because for a second there, you only have one hand. When you get to the end and after you lock the stitch and you're trying to remove the fabric, don't just pull it. Turn the wheel to give you a little more thread so you can get it out of the machine. Now we have three pieces sewn together and I'm just going to continue sewing all of the pieces together and then match up the ends and sew them as well. Leaving an opening so it can be turned inside out, fill it with scraps of fabric, then sew it closed to make an awkwardly shaped <laughs> bean bag. <laughs> I think my wedges were too long, but it still works. And this actually works. 
Here are a few tips to remember. Always use the hand wheel to backstitch before you start sewing, otherwise the thread will get lost and then you'll have to rethread the machine. Be careful when removing the safety cover because it is very easy to strip the screw. For your first few projects, use a basic cotton fabric so that you don't have to adjust the tension. And most importantly, read the book. Have patience and take your time. Since this is battery operated, it is portable. So, sewing on the beach, here I come. However, I don't know if it will make it past airport security. But for right now, I am going to remake the beanbag using a wider wedge. And we'll see you tomorrow for another Unbox Daily. Happy crafting!